Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom and a Fuzzy Snake. And uh, today I want to just do a brief little tutorial on how you can get a computer set up and moved over from an old Windows platform onto a Linux platform should you need to. So I had a friend with this old Asus computer here and uh, this was an old work computer and it's always run fairly slow. I'm, I'm very familiar with this computer. I've done a lot of IT on this over the course of the years. But, you know, she upgraded to a new computer, says, I don't really need this anymore. Do you have a need for it? I'm like, not really. She says, well, I have a friend that could probably use a computer. And uh, the problem is running Windows 7. Uh, it's not going to have security updates. And it's never really been a super good computer as it is. Uh, just because of how old it is, really. And so what I'm going to do here is we're going to set up Peppermint on this. Now, I'm not going to point the... Uh, camera at the screen and show you the whole installation process. The reason is that I have an entire video about how to install Peppermint, which is going to be a whole lot better quality. So what you can do then is just watch that video. I'll have it linked in the description down below. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of walk you through the, the prep, the, the little steps that you might need to do, things we don't necessarily get in a distro install. So the first thing I want to do is I do want to know what type of processor is in here. Now, I kind of have an idea what's in this guy here. I know it's a 64-bit, but in case you don't know, uh, running Windows 7, just go into your properties, right-click into your properties on your My Computer, and you'll get the information. So this is an Asus computer. It's an Asus Notebook K60iJ series. And this has a Pentium dual core CPU, a T4400, which I'm guessing is, my guess is two cores at 2.20 uh, gigahertz. And it has four gigabytes of RAM and a 64-bit processor. Now, the most important thing is what is the bit rate of that processor? Because that'll tell you, do you need a 32 or 64-bit? Of course, we're going with Peppermint because it's, in my opinion, the best lightweight distribution. So like, while I love Linux Mint Cinnamon, four gigs of RAM on an old computer like this, Cinnamon's not gonna be a very good user experience. Peppermint though, will probably be awesome. And so I downloaded, went over to the Peppermint OS website, downloaded the 64-bit ISO because that's what we needed. And then I just dropped that guy with the USB stick writer, or if you're on Windows and you're doing it there, uh, like Rufus, Etcher, you know, various things can do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to boot it, either boot it into the BIOS or boot it into the boot menu, whatever it happens to be. Oh, it's installing updates. Some things never change. So I'll have to come back to the video when updates are done. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna ch shut up the camera. I'll be back on in the next phase. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, shut this guy down. We're going to figure out what the boot sequence is, start the installation process, then I'll kind of talk about what the next steps are going to be from there. Okay, so I have the computer now booting up into Peppermint for the installation. This one actually gave me a little bit of an issue to get into the boot mode because what I want to do is install the USB drive and select to boot off a removable drives. And it kept on going back into Windows. So what I then did is uh, I disabled everything but the removable drive and it says there's no drive here. Well, that was interesting. So I dove a little bit further into the BIOS and found that the USB drive was reporting as a hard drive. So now what I did is I changed the BIOS set options to install off of the hard drive and then I go into the hard drive and set the USB drive as first. This is the first time I've ever actually had to do that on a computer. Um, but now we have booted the system off of the USB drive and I'm going to walk through the installation process here. And uh, so in short, what I did is we had to configure the BIOS on this particular Asus. It was F2 to get into the BIOS. We changed the, the boot priority order into looking at the hard drives. And then I set to boot off of the hard drives. Then it booted off of Peppermint. Now, depending on your computer, you might need to disable a secure boot as well. This computer is so old, it doesn't have secure boot, so I did not have to worry about that. So we'll uh, set up the installation script, and then I'll come back for the next steps. 
Okay, so we've started the installer and now it's just the, the waiting game. Since this is an older computer, I'm gonna let it sit here and it might actually take this computer probably maybe up to towards the 20 or 30 minutes or so to get installed. Uh, it does seem to be moving along. Um, now there's a couple little notes in here. Now, depending on what wireless cards are in your device, you might have an issue connecting to wireless at this point in time, you might not. This computer, it did not have a problem. Now this is because some drivers for wireless cards in computers are not open sourced and so they're not in the Linux kernel. Now the latest Peppermint does do a good job of detecting those and working around them anyway. And uh, in this case, I didn't have any issues. Now this computer also has an ethernet port. So for simplicity and the speed of the install, so it can download packages on the installation, I just went ahead and connect it to an ethernet port. And we're gonna run our driver utility at the end just to make sure. There's two areas you might have a problem with. One of those is your mouse pad. Uh, and one of those is your wireless card. So on any Ubuntu based, uh, distribution like Peppermint, there is the driver utility. We simply want to install that while we're still connected to the uh, to the internet, and it's going to go ahead and check the computer and install anything. On a case like this, you always want to do that. Now, at this point here, if I have a video archive which actually has some uh, some footage of going through and installing Peppermint on a virtual machine. I'll go ahead and drop it in here for context to see the steps you might need to do. It's literally like three blocks, so I might just link to a video that shows it instead. Depends on what I see in the editing process. So we'll come back when this is done installing and I might have a slightly different setup. I'm gonna go and record another video and then I'm gonna come back and uh, record this one, the, the final concluding remarks. Okay, so we let the installation process run. It actually took a lot less time than I was thinking it might was old of a computer this is. It actually took only about 10 minutes, I think, to install. And uh, so we got, a, got it booted up the very first time. And so I'm gonna do some basic configuration tweaks that are gonna make this slightly more user-friendly uh, to a new user. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the clock to a more reasonable format for somebody here in the United States, just kind of by right clicking over there under the clock and doing that kind of stuff. And uh, the next primary thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to run the driver utility to make sure there's no drivers things. Now, what I'm seeing right here is that the mouse pad seems to be working. And it does also appear the wireless card is also working. But still, just to double check, I'm gonna go ahead and run the driver utility. which on Peppermint is called additional drivers. And then when it does this, then we're going to have to go ahead and install the, um, uh, just kind of wait for it to do its thing. It's kind of searching right here. And then it's going to tell me if there's any other drivers that I would should consider installing that are not in the open source Linux kernel. If it says no, then hey, everything's good. We don't actually have to worry about anything. So it does tell me that there's no additional drivers. So my very next step, I'm just going to run the security updates and I'm actually probably gonna go through and remove the ICE applications. I might leave the games, but I'll remove the Google and the Microsoft ICE applications. And I'm going to install LibreOffice because this might land on a desk of somebody. And then I'm going to configure LibreOffice to work best with docx files. So I'm gonna set the default to docx, basic things like this. I've done videos about these various things. And right here, in the matter of about half an hour, I was able to take a Windows 7 computer that was starting to run too slow on Windows 7, and now we're going to be running a Peppermint OS computer, which is running just like Windows did out of the box a decade ago. Very good system, very good platform. That's why I like using Peppermint. And hopefully this video gave you just a little bit more. Like I said, there was that one step that I did uh, that was a little bit unusual having to go in and, and fight with the drives. And by the way, I'll go ahead and mention, I did go back in and I reset the BIOS to what it was. So I changed the primary hard drive back to the original drive. I changed the uh, boot orders back to what they were before, and I re-enabled quiet boot so the thing will boot up a little bit quicker. So those are the final steps that I did in creating this computer here running uh, running our Peppermint OS. So now once I just do these couple little simple steps, 
I'm gonna pack the computer back up in the bag, take it back to my friend who can now pass it on to somebody who could use a computer for basic internet, email applications, and things like that. So thanks for coming along on this video on Switch to Linux. Hopefully this has been helpful, and if there's any other questions that you have about the installation of Peppermint, definitely let me know in the comments down below.